on the highways agency. We did a pre-action protocol on, on Greater Manchester Police. We hit this and hit this hard. Yeah. And Pete is a is a is a layperson. He he hasn't he hasn't well at that time he hadn't even gone to college for his university degree in law. He has done since. So you're talking five, six years ago now. Yeah. <coughs> But because Pete decided he was going to get involved, he was involved, yeah? And the, the case that we actually put together was six and a half hours presentation. Now, if you see Pete working, yeah, six and a half hours <laughs> of, of Pete nonstop talking. Oh, yeah, he, he had to take a lunch break in the middle of the six and a half hours, but it was six and a half hours oh. nonstop presentation. So the amount of weight that we had on this was absolutely incredible, yeah? Now, the Greater Manchester Police brought in a um, sergeant in chambers from the inner city barrister for wig and gown with, with a temple, or with one or two temple secretaries from the inner city, yeah? And before we actually went into the court, this guy dumped a big file on Pete and he said, I'm not taking that. He said, you don't say your time, he just put it on the chair. He said, I'm not taking that because I should have had that weeks ago. Yeah, they should give it you in advance. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was an attempt to distract Pete, if he gets starts reading this, from what his mission was. Yeah. Now, that's not going to work with Pete. It just doesn't phase him in the slightest. Right. Now, the chief of police of Great Samaritan of Police was Sir Peter Farhey. And apparently, on the same day, because this is the, the, the civil court, the high court, yeah, in Manchester, on the same day, Sir Peter Farhey was in the criminal court. Well, he wouldn't have been in there personally himself, but there was a case in the criminal court against Peter Farhey. And apparently, there was a lot of MPs and MEPs in that court case. And when that court case finished at dinner time, when we come back after lunch, the, the public gallery was standing room only, and it's full. There's, there's us, there's, there's a gang of us, yeah? Um, obviously, I was there. And the, M, the MPs, the MEPs, they yeah, stood up. This place is loaded to the gills. And we're waiting for the judge to come back. And the, the sergeant in chambers, barrister, he looks across at Pete, and it's like, you know, what's this? He didn't actually say anything. And Pete looked back and he's going, I, I don't know. Because, you know, all these people, and they were all MPs and MEPs just turned up from nowhere. Yeah? So this is turning into somewhat of a big event. And the, so, you know, we've still got another hour, hour and a half, two hours of a presentation to do at this point, after dinner. And, and Pete just carries on, just ignores everything and carries on. Do, because if you see this guy Pete work in a courtroom, he is majestic. He's absolutely brilliant. He never loses where he's up to. You cannot phase this guy. Wow. He's the politest, most, most um, con candorous person in that courtroom that you could ever imagine when he's talking. He's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. It's an so, art form, isn't it? It's an art oh, form. Oh, yeah. This, and this guy, has, this, this, this guy has got it down. Nice. So he's, he's listening against in person, you know. He's not representing anyone. He's representing himself. Yeah. Yeah, he's brought this claim. He's brought this, this, this application for a restraining order against Gates and Manchester Police. So we get to the end and the judge rises and he goes out and he comes back 10 minutes later, 10 minutes later, with a 20 minute presentation in response. Now, how can you do that in 10 minutes? He had it pre-written. Pre-written, of course it was, pre-written, absolutely pre-written. That's what happened with the Hampstead case. It was released to the papers exactly at the moment that it was read out in court. They had it all typed up. They had it ready yeah, yeah, to go. Yeah, yeah. A yeah. pre-written 20 minute response. He just had a, had, a, had a quick cup of coffee for 10 minutes. That's all he did. Wow. So the outcome of this is, and, and I keep saying to people, you know, these people have impunity. You cannot bring a case against the police, against a policeman, any policeman, yeah. So after this 20 minute presentation and, and the MEPs and the MPs are in the room. It's not just those, the nobodies. We've got MPs and MEPs in the room. 
And the judge turned around at the end of his 20 minute presentation and said, I will not instruct the chief of police in his operations. Right. And we've got uh, an airtight case. So he should have said, That's I not. cannot instruct them in their operations. No, he said, I will not. Yeah, but what he was, what he was covering up was he's not got the authority to. Exactly, and that's the cover-up, and that's what people don't understand. So afterwards, you know, when we leave the courtroom, these MEPs and MPs are giving me and Pete McDowell their, their business cards. Yeah, because they are, they are fuming. They are, they are distraught. Wow. Because of what so they've just watched witnessed. injustice unfold. Yeah, they've just seen injustice unfold. I was, exactly. Yeah. Now, that was the pre-action protocol. Um, before the 176 cases come into the criminal courts. Yeah. Right, yeah. Because this, this carries on after weeks and months, you know. So now we get into the point where there's a company in the UK called, um, shit, what's, what's the name? It's a criminal defence company. Um, and it's a big one in the UK. They do a lot of criminal defence. Um, Robert Lazar's, yeah. So Robert Lazar's have got the defence for all 176 cases. One guy, and that guy's name is Barrister Brigden. Now, Pete McDowell is actually in Robert Lazar's office compiling all the evidence for all the cases. Why was, he, look, his, why was he in his office? Because he volunteered. You know, you need, you need help to compile all these cases. So he volunteered. Now, don't forget, this guy... All right, okay, okay. Yeah, he brought the pre-action protocol prior to, yeah? Right. So these people at Lazar's know who Pete McDowell is anyway. Right. Yeah? Right, so that, that Lazar is a good guy. He offered to help. Pete McDowell offered to help Lazar's the criminal defence. Oh, I see. It was the other way around. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pete McDowell, that didn't have a college degree, offered, no, to, no. Help, offered to help the barrister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There were, he's actually in Lazar's chambers, <laughs> compiling all the 176 case files. Wow. With, with the video evidence and the CDs and everything right. else and the statements and the affidavits wow. into 176 cases with Robert Lazar's, the, the criminal defense law firm. Wow. Yeah? Wow. He's in the office. He's in there. Okay. Now, me and Pete, we've known each other since 2013. We've known each other a long time, okay? So, Pete's down our house one day. He said, Dave, what are we going to do with this? And me and Pete go through the, this is like a full like afternoon and evening um, study, deep study, deep into the, 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 the claim that the, the police are making, yeah? Looking at all the details of, of, of what that is. Looking for the loophole, looking yeah, for yeah, the get yeah. out, looking for the because you know all these people are going to jail. They're all going to get criminal records, and they're all going to get heavy fines. Yeah, just for peacefully protesting. For peacefully protesting, yeah. Because you know this, I got this is costing I gas a fortune, and and you're talking hundreds. There's there's overtime on this job for the police. Um. um assistance for the police intervention yeah you're talking hundreds of people. a fracking thing was it i guess were they wanting to frack yeah they were fracking they were drilling holes okay okay got it yeah yeah, yeah. okay so we the uh, and so pete's out house and we're going through the the the, the case like uh, black you know we go we go deep we go deeper i said pete i said this is the prevention of a police officer, um, obstructing a police officer in the course of his duties. That's his public duty, he said, yeah. I said, that's not what the police are doing. I yeah, said, they the weren't police, doing I, their public duties, they were protecting a corporation. Their public right, duty said, is to protect the public, protect and serve the public. Right, so the police have got to allow a peaceful demonstration. Yeah, yeah, and protect the people doing it. And protect the people doing it. Yeah, exactly. Not, not, they were, not, instead, not, they were protecting the gas company. Right, they would have the right to frack. I got it. You're right, right, right. I said, yeah. so that is, 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 is your hole. 
Yeah. Also, they are not acting in their public duty. No. They are acting in a private capacity, yes. a security firm, but I yeah. guess. Yeah, exactly. It's a private corporation rending, giving security to a private corporation and pretending right. that they're public servants in the, in, the, in the process of doing it. Yeah, I get that. You've got it. So, and Pete looked at me, he said, he said, Dave, you said you've just nailed it. I said, I know. Nailed it. Nailed it. Right. So Pete is going into the office the next day and we're getting very close on the first hearing. Yeah. Pete's going into the office the next day, as Pete does, doing what he does in, in the Robert Lazar's criminal defence lawyers. And he's got all of this guy, Barrister Brigden. Yeah. Now, criminal defence lawyers are not on a lot of cash. Criminal prosecution lawyers, on the other, on the other hand, earn a fortune because they represent the state. So, you know, this, this guy, and so he's telling this to Barrister Brigden, and Barrister Brigden's like, it's like half a day. Pete McDowell took Barrister Brigden back to school for like half a day, talking directly to this barrister. Wow. And at the end of it, yeah, and the, at the end of it, he, he said, Pete, I need a smoke. He said, he said, you got to... Now, Pete's unemployed, got next to no cash, but he's got a few smokes. Wow. He's balanced it. He, he gave up smoking years ago, and he needed to go out for us. That's how much we distressed him. It shook him. It shook him. him. Yeah, yeah. He unlearn everything he'd learned. Yeah, yeah. We took him back to school, okay? Wow. wow. And Barrister Pignum was not happy to go into the criminal defence saying that the police are criminals, which is basically what he would have to be. Yeah, because that yeah. risks his job and his career and everything, yeah, yeah. His job and his career and everything else. So, Pete McDowell actually wasn't in the courtroom. He was, he was scheduled to be in the courtroom, but he actually got sent away um, with the um, continued investigation by um, Robert Lazars because they, they were having the chemical soil samples taken and Pete took this chemist guy, soil sample guy, Round the sites, yeah, yeah. Um, so he was coming in, Pete McDowell was coming in like right at the end of, of, of the first day, and he met Barrister Brigden coming, coming off the lift, yeah, because it finished in the courtroom for that day, yeah. Barrister Brigden was running up to Pete and giving him a hug. He said, Pete, you're a genius, he said, because I wasn't going with your, with your criminal defense, he said, until I realized halfway through the first one that what I was saying was just not going to work. He said, so I switched it round. He said, I went with that criminal defence. He said, you nailed it. It's bang on. And, and over the next coming weeks and months, every single one of them, 176... Was dismissed. Was case dismissed, not guilty. Wow. And there was one particular day where there was 25 people scheduled for that day and Greater Manchester Police tried to withdraw that day's schedule. And Barrister Brigden said, no. He said, if we don't do this today, you can come back at a later time. Because yeah, that's you just right. Yeah. You've, just, you've just postponed it. You left it on fire. Left those people in stress and anxiety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So they, 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 every single case was, no, no, it was, was case dismissed. And, and, yeah. and yeah, yeah. Right. And, and they had to go through the whole day doing the presentations exactly as they would have done if the police hadn't tried to, to pull the cases. Yeah. yeah. We still took all the day, yeah? Yeah. And every one of them, 176 people were found not guilty. And did it now, hit the papers? No. Now, let me finish the story. Sorry. Let me finish. Yeah, yeah. You're getting excited now. Yeah. You're, you're trying to get to the end. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I'm going to drag this out as long as I can. Go on then. <laughs> Enjoy it. Enjoy the victories. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, there's, there's still protesters on the site, you know, it's still going on. And, and they're like overjoyed because, you know, we're, we're not guilty, not guilty. Not. And the, after all these cases are over, there is going to be a host of damages claims. And one of the guys that had actually ended up down a ditch with a, with a, ended up in hospital, he's been told that his damages claims will be enough to buy a house. You're talking serious damages claims, yeah? Yeah, and how um, did he incur his injuries? 
Well, he got manhandled by the police and he ended up falling down a ditch. Oh, right. Yeah, and, and he twisted his knee or something and he ended up in hospital. Right, right. He wasn't that badly hurt, but, you know, he, he was hurt. He, there was an hospital record of the fact that he was in hospital. Right, okay. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, after um, all the cases are over, then you've got all the damages claims. Now, I don't know to this day how much that cost Greater Manchester Police. But that would have cost Greater Manchester Police directly for all them damages claims. And Sir Peter Farhey suddenly took early retirement. Wow. In other words, wow. he got fired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, 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 yeah. In yeah. Ireland as well, early retirement is code for, you know... You just got fired, yeah. You just got fired, yeah. <laughs> Right, so, so me and Pete, we got Sir Peter Farhey fired wow. with that criminal defence. Brilliant, well done, well done. So look, I want, to I want to start a process against PayPal because the trolls got to them again for a second time and PayPal were foolish enough to send me an email saying we're terminating your account because of an undue risk of loss to ourselves by servicing you. So I want to fire them off a part one letter. He who makes a claim has the obligation to produce the evidence thereof. So um, I'll try and draft it myself based on the ones I've already done. Yeah. And I'll send it to you for editing just if I've made left anything out or made any mistakes. Okay, I think that's a good idea because you need to get your feet wet. Because so far, yeah, I I'll, I'll study what I've done with the first seven. And yeah. I'll go through the first three stages with PayPal because I've been following some people in America that are starting to state, take actions against Google, PayPal, Patreon, all these big platforms that just throw you off if, if, if they feel like it or if they get enough. I've been doing that in the court because, you know. Well, they've been doing it in the court, but they've been having some wins. And there's also, there's an interesting case going on with Patreon, which is a platform. And uh, so they threw somebody off and 72 of his Patreons said to them, no, we're not having this. We, you're interfering with a, this is torturous interference between us and the person we were supporting. So we're not having this. And Patreon's terms and conditions says you can't take a class action. And before any court proceedings, you have to submit to arbitration. So they submitted to arbitration and they threw out the content creator's arbitration because it was him, but they haven't thrown out the 72 people that said you've in interfered with our contract with this content creator. So it's very interesting and it's cost them millions already so far. They've had to arbitrate um, you know, it cost them about, I don't know, it's cost them millions. It's cost them at least five million Patreon to, to do what they've done so far. Yeah. And then they tried, even though their terms and conditions say you can't take us to court unless you go through arbitration first and you can't take us to court in a class action. But then Patreon tried to take them to court. And it's like, hold up, you know. So what I'm saying is there are people, and I was listening to the guy, Vox Day, and he was saying... The reason these pe these big corporations are getting away with it is because nobody fights when they get deplatformed. Everybody just rolls over, makes a YouTube video about it, and and does nothing about it. So yeah. I want to continue. I'm ready to go to the next stage with Google because I've downloaded all my content from Google and I've opened a BitChute account. Yeah. So if the worst came to the worst and Google threw me off because I'm going after them legally, not legally, but you know, with a lean, it's not the end of the world anymore because I've got all my content saved. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like to get thrown off, but if they did, because since I spoke to you, they got cheeky again. They, um, they pulled one video down altogether, took it down and they banned three more in the UK. Yeah. This was all like the week before last, all in one week. So I'm ready to go forward with Google and I'll give it another week before I proceed with the cops. Well, we've, we've already got the three first letters. We've done the first three on all seven claims. 
but they probably think or possibly think because it's interesting this guy is only getting the letter from may now in august mm -hmm. and that might be because he's just been put in charge and they're all getting moved around and you know amory cagney's gone to dublin and he's gone to the eastern region whatever i don't know but he's put his name to paper and they probably think angie won't proceed do you know what I mean? She won't go any further. Well, the private. This isn't in the courtroom. We do everything in the private. Yeah, know? yeah. Stay out of the courtrooms. We, no, but I mean, for a while, they were scared. So they were writing me letters with no names on them. They were just yeah. writing me letters saying from Corporate Services Division or whatever. No signature, no name, nothing. Because they were scared about these personal liens coming down the road. Oh, yeah. It definitely puts the wind up them. Definitely. You know, yeah. We haven't got to the, the, the fourth letter in that series of letters. No, and I want to do that, but I think I should give another week's grace for this evidence to arrive. And yeah. if it hasn't arrived by the end of this week, I'm going to have to act like it doesn't exist and keep going forward. Yeah, but that's with Google. You've got, you've got three, two or three things. You've, you've got the police, you've got the DPP. Yeah, but it would, all, it would all be a different scenario if and when the evidence I'm expecting arrives. That throws all that out of the water, and then just going after people is just a matter of paperwork. Then, because I proved my no, case, it, it doesn't tell the DPP and the police in your computer. Oh no, they're still wrong. It's two years today that they've had my computer and two laptops. Two years. Yeah, I know. Today. But the point I'm trying to make to you here is, okay, you've got evidence against this guy. There is a paedophile, but his that doesn't affect his claim against you for for um. Um, yeah, but if somebody's claiming happens. online harassment and mm -hmm. I'm able to come uh, to prove this is a paedophile, Your Honour, then the harassment claim doesn't stand up. It's like Jimmy Savile, you know, and Lord McAlpine and, and all these different people suing victims that said he raped me. And then they turn around and sue the victim for defamation or something. But it's the truth. You well, know, it's the truth. You know, I'm not arguing the fact that it's the truth. Yeah. What I'm saying to you is, I don't think the fact that this guy actually is a paedophile and he is guilty as hell is going to have any bearing on, on his claim against you for harassment. Oh, it's got to. It's got to. Who's going to give credence to, if, if, there's, if there's the evidence I believe there is, and this man is on video raping his children... What judge is going to give him credibility or credence or court time? Really? And if they did, their career would be over. Their career well, yeah. would be I, over. I would agree with that. You know, I would agree with that. It's a really good. It's like, can you yeah. imagine the headlines? Proven child raping, baby <laughs> murdering, <laughs> wind harassment case against journalists. It would be just ridiculous. When you're talking about someone like Damon, yeah, who's protected by the state, yeah, you know, yeah. He's a they'll cut him loose. If he becomes too hot to handle, they'll cut him loose. They will. Yeah, they'll cut him loose, but they won't allow the case with with your evidence. They they will say you can't put bring your evidence at this stage. No, well, but the truth is, if this pans out as it's supposed to, the evidence has been released to multiple people, yeah. not just me. It's been sent a copy to me because of the court case being attempted. Now, now let, let's put that back in, in the criminal defence with that evidence, if you could get it in the courtroom. Yeah. Because they've got to prove... Yeah, it's got to be admissible. It's admissible. Yeah, it's admissible. To, yeah. to do harm against this guy. Yeah, and that's why I think they won't let it go to court because... And that's why they've never prosecuted the mother or the boyfriend. They call them fugitives from justice. But the boyfriend is very open about where he is. He makes videos from where he is. And the mother could be tracked down like that. They don't want to arrest them because then they would be allowed to bring their evidence to court. They don't want the evidence in the yeah, court. Yeah, they don't want it in the court. They don't. Oh, exactly. They so don't. And this is why you're, you're, you're not going to be brought in the courtroom for your, for your criminal defence. Yeah, but it's, it's so wrong. It's like two years of being under criminal investigation has done... Phenomenal damage, phenomenal, horrendous damage. It's just not okay. Anyway, so I'm going to wait a week to progress, the, to go to step four with Google and with the DPP and with the cops.
but I'm going to spend this week, and I promise I'll do this. I'm so bad at this shit, but I'm going to do it. This week, I'm going to draft my first letter to PayPal based on the other seven that I've already done. It shouldn't be too hard. It shouldn't be no. too hard. And I'll you send you... I'll send you the first draft. Oh, and I want your address, because i tell you what happened. You helped me do this, right? Do you remember when we ordered that heavy-duty stapler online? Yeah. I got two sent to me. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure they only charged me for one. Okay. So I'm going to post the other one to you. Well, you, you, well, you can't post anything to me, because I don't have an address. Oh. I am addressless. I am formally, uh, um, where I'm situated, this location, formally does not have a post office address. <laughs> well, it's, if you give... It's if absolutely you... brilliant because, you know, they can't send me any paperwork or anything. <laughs> if you but send me... Than anybody else. Well, I've got two of these. I've got two of these big... In fact, I've got three because with a similar story, you know, I, I ordered one. Um, it didn't get delivered. It got dropped off at the mission, which was up the road. Um, and it didn't arrive because, you know, it's not something you can fit through the last box. And I ordered another one. And and that didn't get turned up at our house. It turned up at our house. I was at 145. It turned up at 45, Slater Street, which is up the road. So I got that one. Eventually, I got the one from the mission. Yeah. Because the people next door were involved with the mission. You know, is this yours? I said, yeah. So I've got both of them now. And well, you've got guy. enough. You've got enough. Well, if you find a good home for one, uh, if you don't I've want actually, it. I've actually got three because a guy, um, Alfie Evans, yeah. yeah, he gave me his. I'm not using this anymore, Dave. There you go. Right. And this is bigger than mine. <laughs> and maybe I'll, put a, maybe I'll put a notice in the security by way of a lean group. And I'll just say free to anybody that wants to pay the shipping. Mm. Right. I'll just give it, I'll give it away. Cause I didn't, I don't think, I, I might have been charged twice. I can't tell because my PayPal's gone now and I paid for it by PayPal. But um, I, I don't know if I got charged twice or whatever, but whoever wants to just pay the shipping from Ireland, I'll give it to. Cause I don't <laughs> need to, I don't need to. All right, well, look, I've got my homework for this week. And that letter is just, actually just sharing it with you has made me realise that's the contact I requested. I said, please put me in touch with the Eastern Region. Because the Garda Commissioner said, deal with the Eastern Region Assistant Commissioner. I've told her to deal with you. But then she's come and gone. And now whoever's replaced her has finally made contact with me since May. And he said to me, deal with the local super. You know, so. <laughs> You're just passing your hand. No one's going to give you that warrant because it doesn't exist. Well, he says, it. he's written in the letter. I mean, he's on record as saying, Superintendent Waters will also provide you with a copy of the warrant you have sought. Yeah. So he just didn't say when. <laughs> there was two warrants for my arrest. Two. Two warrants for my arrest from um, HM Courts and Tribunal Services, uh, PO Box 101, Run Corn, um, Warrant Manager. Now, I didn't have the warrant manager's name. But, you know, these, these, two, these two warrants weren't warrants. I got a notice of a warrant for my address. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, I, I wrote back and said, Thank you very much for your letter. We have noticed that this is a notice, and a notice is not a warrant. <laughs> well, I don't think, I actually, as well, when somebody wrote to me previously, they said something about, you won't get anything you were asking for until the DPP makes a decision. And I mean, it's unheard of. The DPP have had my file eight months. Who oh, keeps a file was, for eight months? There was two warrants for my arrest, according to the warrant manager, A. Callister. I did eventually get a name. And then didn't you fact eventually found out after the event that it's a woman? That the you know, there's two warrants for my arrest. Well, where are they? I know. So she's got two commercial liens against her candy ass for millions. Yeah. Because she couldn't produce the warrant. Oh, just a final note. I'll show you I wonder if it's on this page or the other one. I got a thing saying that 
you know the Q movement, which you know it's good as far as it goes. I do think it's a military uh, citizen arrangement thing, you know, whatever. But What's the other thing? you know Q, you know the QAnon movement. Yeah, it's the NSA in, in, in yeah, America. Yeah, right. Well, I got a message saying that they're starting um, a crypto coin uh, blockchain. Yeah. And that for the original adopters, which they hope will be all the Q people, they're going to give you some free Q coins. Yeah. You and know if you get in right at the beginning, obviously, it's, it said if you missed... Because I was offered Bitcoin in 2010 at $53 a coin. Mm -hmm. And I could have made a killing. When it went up to 20 grand, I could have made a killing. And I didn't okay. go for it. So it says uh -huh. in this message, if you missed out on Bitcoin, here's an opportunity. The Q uh, movement is starting a blockchain currency. And if you just send your email address and your name, you will be allocated free Q in the in the in as an original adopter. So I'm, I think and I'm going to do that. And it all sounds great. And it might be bollocks. It might be bullshit. I, but it wasn't with Bitcoin. The person that said to me, "Buy Bitcoin at fifty three dollars." His name was Lord Anthony Bain. Oh my God, he knew his shit. And I didn't listen to him. And I miss. I could have been a millionaire by now. No, no. Listen to me, please. All right. I'm, I'm a Microsoft certified systems engineer. I know. As you know. Yeah. You know, I, I built the servers and, and the banks. The MOD and, and all that, yeah. Ministry of Defense, right. So I know my stuff. I'm, not, I'm no dummy in, in yeah. this world, okay? Yeah. I've just finished, or uh, a couple of months ago, I finished an 18-month deep investigation, not into Bitcoin, but into cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency, yeah. Yeah, because my my um, investigation and research was would this crypto provide me with a commercial vehicle? Yeah, would it work to monetize your liens? Yeah, monetize the liens. Well, the liens yeah. are monetized anyway. Yeah, but to yeah to cash them or whatever. Yeah. Now that turned into an eighteen-month investigation. Okay. But once and we, and we got funding. There's a, a lovely lady down the south somewhere that that came up with the funding. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah, thirty thousand. Well, thirty thousand pounds. Yeah. Oh, bless. Oh, she's a lovely woman. Absolutely yeah. diamond of a woman. Yeah. She's seven. She's seventy years old as well. Oh. She's gorgeous. <laughs> I say seventy. That'll be me in seven years. Oh my god. <laughs> anyway, so we got the funding like best part of a year after I'd actually started the investigation, which means now we've got to go back and start the ball rolling again. You know, the two contract offer of contracts. At a year old, so we we do a full investigation again with contracts, everyone, and we're going through a process now. It's not just me anymore. There's a team of us, you know. Yeah, there's there's there's, there's um, Davy Johnson, an American, Andy Devine, Vivian, um, me. There's so if we're having a meeting, if if we're, if we're talking to the developer companies, there's four or five of us in that meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Me taking the lead because I'm a technical geek, but yeah. you know. It's we we're not just a um, we had a, we had a, a concern now yeah that's great yeah that's great so we're in Zoom meetings talking to the the technical people programmers and and we have two or three of these meetings and and then they send us a contract having discussed everything and they understand everything and that the, the contract itself was diabolical okay. But then the last meeting that I had with, and I can't remember what the company was, I was actually talking directly to a, a top boffing crypto programmer. Okay. The actual guy that does the coding himself. Yeah, yeah, okay. But that knows his stuff. All right. And because I'm in conversation with him, you know, we need this to function in this particular way. And he said, well, we can do everything else. He said, but there's no path back from your crypto coin to the crypto exchange back into um, fiat. He said, you can sell your crypto coin to anyone that's got any fiat currency, or you can sell it to the bank. I said, I'm not interested in selling this to the bank. I said, I want to do a direct transfer back into fiat from my crypto. He said, there is no path to do that. 
at this time. So everybody that's bought crypto, now I want to simplify this as much as I can. There's a crypto vendor and there's a crypto buyer. He's the investor. The crypto yeah, I followed vendor. it a bit and there's, there was a way through places like Coinbase where you could convert it to, to uh, currency. You could convert it. You could either get a credit card with, with coins on it and you could use that credit card to pay for stuff that would accept Bitcoin or that you would could actually convert it to dollars. You could actually convert it to currency. Well, there's, there's, there's a lot of bullshit out there, okay? There's a lot of people talking crap, a lot of hype. I'm talking directly to a boffin. Yeah, no, I program. believe you. I believe you. It's just strange that he says there's no way, no pathway to connect it to fiat currency because with Bitcoin there is. No, there isn't. Well, it doesn't matter if it's all Bitcoin or Lithium or Eon or Pink Fish. There is no route path back to the crypto exchange. If you go through a broker like Coinbase. Even if you go through a coin, a broker like Coin, they're just a broker. But they somehow did have this way of, of anyway, look, I'm not going to argue because I tried to open a Bitcoin account even when it was at two and a half thousand and somehow I couldn't complete it. I've got a Bitcoin wallet, but it just, it, it wrecked my head and I just walked away from it. I just okay. left it alone. Yeah, so let, let me finish that, that Sorry, synopsis. Okay. All right. Okay. If there is no direct route back, because I'm not looking to sell these Lian coins to somebody else who's got some fiat. I'm looking to transfer it directly back to fiat currency. And yeah. if there is no direct route back to the crypto exchanges, then everybody that's bought crypto, that's it, you're done. That turns, the whole crypto world of crypto then turns into a multi-level marketing scam. Yeah. And then yes, the one that's how can I offload open. my crypto? You know, how can I offload my crypto and make some money on it? Because people don't realize it doesn't convert into, into fiat right. currency. Wow, 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 wow. And that's the, that's the con. And, and that is just bleeding the fear out of the fear into crypto. Wow. But, but let's not forget the crypto vendor has got the fear. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's got the fear. That's right. You know, you've got 20 million in a crypto and, you, and you've sold your 20 million crypto, you've got 20 million in a bank somewhere. That's right. That's right. So got, it's just, got the fear. Yeah, so it's just a case of how many mugs can I sell yeah. crypto to that don't realize it will never turn into money. Which is why there is 16,000 crypto coins, 16,000 crypto coins and token on yeah. a planet. Listen, these are the numbers, these are statistics. The numbers do not lie. This is the statistics. Okay? 16,000 crypto coins on a planet that's got at best 200 fiat currencies. And in addition to that, the amount of trade using crypto is only 3%. Yeah, that's because the, the unsavory part is that Bitcoin was originally used mostly for drugs and guns and children and pornography. Well, so people say, but a lot of people invested as an investment. Yeah, no, I would have invested, like I should have listened to Anthony Bain when he said buy at 53 quid or $53, I should have bought, because it did go to 20 grand. So from yeah, $53 to 20,000, I would have made a killing. Yeah. You know, but never mind, that's gone. But I'm gonna sign up for the Q thing, because what's the worst that can happen? Do you know what I mean? Well, if you give them away, then then accept the giveaways. That's yeah, accept the giveaway, yeah. No, Which every, happens... everyone, everyone that launches a crypto does a, what's called a sky drop and gives them away. Yeah, to the That's first the yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, well, look, I've got my homework for this week. I'll do a part one with PayPal. And, and then um, if I haven't got my drop by Friday, I'll have to sort of rejig my way forward. And then next week, I'll ask you to help me with part four with Google yeah. and the DPP and the guards. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Now then, where are we up to with Ben Gilroy? Uh, I never got back. I never heard back from him about habeas corpus. I never heard back from him. I, I put a shout out on I, my live streams on Facebook get about two and a half thousand views now. 
and I gave him a shout out there. I messaged him and yeah, I never heard back from him. As far as I know, during the COVID, they suspended habeas corpus in Ireland. And, um, you know, the cops have just said, you can't get your stuff back I until... That, I know that they said that they've suspended habeas corpus, but they can't suspend habeas corpus. It's impossible because yeah. it's an illegal detainment. It, it's impossible to suspend that fucking act. It can't be done. I don't yeah. care what they say. Yeah. Yes, they talk shit, okay? Don't I forget, know. it's about the criminals talking crap. I know. I know. Right. Now, the point is, if we're going to move ahead at some point with doing an habeas corpus to get your computers back, All right. Um, I'm going to have to download, and you're going to have to download, and we're both going to have to read, because don't forget, I've never done this. Yeah? yeah. You're going to have to go and download the, the Rits of Habeas Corpus Act so that we can both read it. Okay. All right, I'll put that on my homework as well, right? That's my two homeworks. Yeah. All right, hang on. So, step one. Because I'll have to derive what we're going to do from the act itself. All right, so step one is PayPal, and then, and then uh, habeas corpus. Writ. Download and read. All right, that'll do for a week. And the other thing that I heard about Ben is he's running for election. No, he's given up on that. He did run for election twice, two or three times, but he's so disgusted, he's now deregistered. He doesn't believe in voting anymore. Because <laughs> okay. yeah. what happened to Chrissy Morris? You know, Chrissy Morris was a major advocate. He's got lots of videos out there <coughs> making phone calls to people to, oh, no, no, no. Bayless and debt collection companies and whoever. And then someone said, you know, run for office and become a councillor. And he did. And that's it. Chrissy Morris has gone, disappeared, finished. Well, Ben on worked the really hard. He, he campaigned. He worked tirelessly. He helps people all over the country. He gets five or 10,000 views every time he does a live stream. But he's totally disillusioned with the voting system. He says it's completely rigged. And oh, the, the it, national it, television won't let him on, even though he's like got enough behind him to merit being in a debate. They won't let him in on the telly, and he just he's just he advising get, everybody to deregister. He says it's it's a load of bollocks. You won't get in unless you're invited in. You've got yeah, to be invited yeah, in, and yeah. you'll get in. Yeah. yeah. So that's it. I'll make one more. T I'll try one more time, but I think he's just simplifying and sticking in his own lane. He's trying to get people to deregister. He's his main lane is fighting illegal evictions, you know. Yeah. And he but does the courtroom, which will fail. Yeah, well, I don't know. He's learning all the time. He's not averse to new. Well, you know, I have, I have tried to contact this guy myself. You know. Yeah. Um, no response. He's got, I think, three or four kids. One of whom had leukemia and nearly died. You know, and and like loads of people seek him out. If he if he was on a salary for the things he's done to help people like you, right? He should be on a hundred grand a year. You know. Oh. You know. Anyway, all right, Dave. Look, I'll leave it at that, and I'll get on to my work, and um, I'll keep you posted. Awesome. Good to talk to you. And I don't need to do anything with that letter, do I? Say again. I don't need to do anything with that letter. All he's saying is your local no, super... No, no, it's, it's, it's a bullshit letter. It's just saying, I'm the assistant commissioner, your local super will give you a copy of the warrant. Sometime. Yeah. <laughs> stick it in your filing cabinet. All right, love you, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay. Bye for now.